Democrats in California had a great idea. It's simple. All these rich people own these really big houses. So how about if any of them sell the house, they got to pay a 4% sales tax to the state and we'll use that money to help deal with the homeless problem. Sounds like a good idea, right? Okay. Because these people don't understand anything about economics, they come out and they go, we got so many homeless people. We need money. We'll tax the rich. Yay, they cheer. So guess what? LA's luxury house sales plummet 70% in the first year since its hated mansion tax was brought in as millionaires choose to live outside the city in Beverly Hills, Malibu, and Santa Monica instead. Talk about the stupidest thing you can do. That's basically it. So let's say you own a mansion that's worth, uh, it's 4% on 5 to $10 million property sales. So let's say you've got a $10 million property. And I know many of you probably don't. Some of you might actually, who knows? All of a sudden, the question is, why would I buy that? I have to now overcome a 4% deficit for any investment uh, in this property. That means if I'm going to buy a $10 million property, it has to go up in value at least 4%. And I have to clear the fees from the loans before I can sell it. That means you are underwater. Okay, look, you buy a house. Let's say it's $300,000. You go to the bank, you get a loan. You say, I'm going to put 50,000 down. The bank says, we're going to give you 250K. Then there's fees. Let's say you spend $10,000 in fees. Then there's interest. If you calculate the interest over a 30-year mortgage, you're probably paying $700,000 on a $300,000 house. So every time you pay that principal, that principal but interest, but the principal goes down only a little bit because the interest, how do you get out from underneath this? It's not so easy. You want to build wealth, but loans cut the, your, your, your wealth building in half. Now imagine this. Not only do you have the fees on top. So like, let's say you sold the house. Let's say you bought the house for 300. You pay a fee of 10,000. Okay. Then over the next few months, you calculate you're going to spend a few thousand dollars. I'm not going to do the math. A few thousand dollars in interest. So you're like, if I'm going to sell my house, which is 300,000 after the fees, after the interest that I've already paid, and I want to leave with at least breaking even, your $300,000 house now has to sell for $325,000. Imagine this. Before you even buy it, you know you need another 4% on top. Okay, are you kidding me? We're talking about twelve dollars on top if you're a $300,000 house. So now you're like, if I want to sell this and not be underwater, I've got to sell it for at least like three fifty. dollars Only problem is, what if the price doesn't go up? What if there's no other buyers? It's real simple. Ain't nobody going to want to buy LA mansions. Just go live somewhere else. The funny thing is, for properties more than $10 million, it's actually, I think, like 5.2%. LA's housing department has generated $215 million in the tax over the past year, a disappointing sum compared with the $900 million it was predicted to raise. Uh, it's 5.5. Homeowners will lose 5.5% of their sale price if they decide to cash in on their estate. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Let me tell you why this is a scam. It's very, very easy. Look at that $126 million mansion. It's a scam because, my friends, LA has been able to solve their homeless problem a long time ago. I know because I worked with, uh, with, it, with uh, homeless nonprofits in Los Angeles. The issue is NIMBY. Not in my backyard. How is it that a city with a Democrat supermajority in a Democrat majority state could not just enact the policies they claim will help people? Because they don't help people. That's it. They all campaign on it. But this is what you get with single party control. Now, I, I hear a lot. California's got so much great stuff going on. It does. It's beautiful. They've got late season skiing and snowboarding. How wild is that? You know, and this is true. Of, this is, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize until recently. Did you know Las Vegas, a desert, has skiing? That's right. Right next to Vegas, 50 minutes out, is a mountain with snow. That's kind of wild. You can be in Vegas in the winter, and it's like 50 degrees. Drive up a mountain, and now it's 20 or 30 degrees, and you're snowboarding. Go back to Vegas. That's rad. I like Vegas. 
I don't like the debauchery of Vegas. I like the entertainment of Vegas. But, you know, with that comes whatever you'd expect. Certainly, if anyone was going to claim there's a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, unfortunately, it's Vegas and Atlantic City. But don't worry, everybody. Don't worry. We won't single them out. Casinos are now legal in most places and online gambling and all that stuff. So the degeneracy is spreading everywhere. Seamus Coughlin said, if God does not smite us, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shout out to Freedom Tunes. Anyway, I digress. What, what could California be if it actually had political competition? You wouldn't need these taxes. You wouldn't need to see property values collapse. You would be able to succeed. You know, Mike Cernovich talks about this. A lot of people say, get out of California. It's terrible. They don't want to be there. It's interesting. There's a lot of, uh, look at this. Is this LA? It's not LA County, is it? What is this barrier they, they've drawn? It goes down to Long Beach. California, is, it's, it's unfortunate that it's so beautiful with such great weather and such bad policy. But I think this is a product of what it is. Who moves to California? People who want to make it rich. There's a lot of self-interest and, and drive to go there and succeed. And I can respect that. But with this, you get a lot of people saying, leave me out of it. And that's unfortunate. When I lived in L.A., there was a sticker over at Amoeba Music on Sunset. This is near Hollywood. And it said, welcome to Los Angeles. When you leave, take someone with you. Everyone loved that sticker because nobody's from L.A., they say. Everyone moves there. So what does that mean? If everybody is, is moving there, there's no community. There's no drive to defend the commons. There's just give me what I deserve. What does that lead to? A government where when people dump on the street, nobody does anything about it. They just say, not my problem. That's what you get in California. Sure, it's beautiful. Sure, there's great mountains and the weather is fantastic and there's lush farmland. But most people there don't like you, don't like anyone else. So it's unfortunate. But I think ultimately what we can see from California, and we can thank them, is because they're effectively an incubator for bad Democrat ideas. Unfortunately for us, it's been reported in the past that California is typically five years ahead of the rest of the United States. And within five years, we begin adopting their policies, too. And I think that's fairly apparent. When you look at sanctuary state policies, sanctuary city policies, voting, the homeless crisis, illegal immigration. Yep. Now, something's changing thanks to the Internet. And it may be that red states reject these ridiculous policies because they can see what's happening and the information travels much more quickly. But I think ultimately we have a human problem. Humans hear these easy outs and they take them. So a politician comes out and says, let's just tax all of these wealthy mansion sales. Well, guess what? No one's going to buy them. Why would I want to buy an expensive property in Los Angeles when I'm going to lose 4%? That's a terrible investment. That's, when do I get to sell that? Already, we're seeing many luxury properties drop in value. The, the numbers are going down. Are millennials and Gen Z going to be able to buy these fancy properties? The answer is no. So what ends up happening is we're going to become more like Ukraine. Before the war, I don't know where they're at now, but the oligarchs owned almost all the property. I remember looking at a condo in Ukraine. I was wondering about the prices. 300,000 US dollars. And I thought to myself, like, well, that makes no sense. 300,000 US dollars? What? Who in Ukraine can afford that? They make like 400 bucks a month. The oligarchs, the ultra wealthy own everything and they rent it out for like 100 bucks a month. They buy a $300,000 condo and rent it out for $100 a month because that's how machine operates. That's where we're going based on Democrat policies. If we continue in the direction, you will have crime, you will have poverty, you will own nothing, and you'll be happy. I'll tell you why I'd be happy, because they're going to give you a bunch of drugs and stick you in the matrix. They're going to put you in the pod, pump your stomach full of roach goo. See, that's the mistake. They say you'll eat the bugs. Mm, you'll eat something akin to bugs. Lobsters are kind of like bugs, but I like lobster. This is the future that's being built. These policies ensure it. Luxury properties in Los Angeles. And maybe this is the intent. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the real goal of the Democrats was to drive down property values by creating a burden so that it would control these prices and lower them. 
Maybe. Maybe what actually ends up happening is a $5 million property becomes a $2 million property. And then this drives down housing prices because nobody wants to buy them. But eventually someone does. Eventually someone who's, I mean, look, you got a mansion with 10,000 square feet and like, you know, a, a 10 car garage and an in-ground, uh, in-ground pool. And it's like elevated. Normally goes for a hundred or let's say $20 million in LA. Now it's a $2 million property. Now someone might be like, wow, I'd like to have that. a big house. I just, I just want to tell you this. I'll, I'll wrap it up by saying, people, you don't want big houses. The house I live in is probably like, we utilize maybe a thousand square feet. That's, that's, that's probably not even. I think we use like 500. I'm not saying don't live your best. I'm just saying you only really need a big house for your expecting family. Maybe a guest room. Then you want extra room depending on how big you plan to have your family. But I assure you, you don't want to live in a mansion. You need a staff to maintain it. Not kidding. With uh, the IRL studio now, it's like 12,000 total square feet for everything. And if we get a leak somewhere and someone doesn't check on it, so we have crew that maintains everything. Yeah, you don't want to live in a house like that. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all then.